The Belarus opposition activist Maria Kolonesnikova has been formally charged with threatening national security. It comes as protests in the country enter their sixth week following the disputed re-election of President Alexander Lukashenko. Well, let's get the very latest now from Alex in the queue. Well, Tokes, this is breaking news. It wasn't unexpected, but the exact detail we hadn't seen to this point. Maria Klosnikova resisted a forced attempt to expel her from Belarus uh, between the 7th and the 8th of this month. Authorities saying they officially took her into detention on the 8th. We didn't know where she was for vast periods of time. Then she was held without charge on suspicion of national security offences. Now we have the official charge, and it was communicated to the world from the authorities in Belarus via Telegram, through social media, in this little post here. Let's just translate that into English for you to bring up the charges being levelled against her. Well, they're saying investigators today are formally charging Maria Klosnikova under part three of their criminal code. That is, calls for action aimed at causing harm to the national security of the Republic of Belarus through the mass media and the internet. Now, we know Maria Klosnikova has been part of this group called the uh, Transition, uh, the Opposition Transition Council, the Coordination Council, with a view to bringing dialogue about fresh new elections. Elections that should have happened, of course, the European Union rejecting the re-election of Alexander Lukashenko, while Maria Klosnikova leading the charge for a new set of elections to meet international standards. She's a figurehead, really, of this wider Belarus protest movement. Her team uh, reacting... Um, very quickly, it's worth saying on social media, uh, saying here that everybody in Belarus uh, is incredible. We've seen, of course, all the way through this, they said Maria's spirit is unbroken, that she will face whatever charges are leveled against her. Well, this issue, of course, has become a huge geopolitical uh, dividing point, flashpoint between uh, Europe and Russia. Russia backing uh, Alexander Lukashenko, meeting with the president, as we're saying, uh, Vladimir Putin, meeting with Alexander Lukashenko, giving him a sort of a sign of approval there. Well, today, speaking to Euronews, the European Commission president, Ursula von der Leyen, took questions about how this situation is developing and what Europe will do. Speaking to our correspondent, Effie Costa Costa, this is what she told us. The member states are at the moment discussing the sanctions for those who are responsible for the violence after elections that were neither free nor fair and where people peacefully took to the streets. Um, what we've learned out of that too is that we need a mechanism to, if human rights are violated, to impose sanction that is faster. Um, and therefore we will propose as a commission a so-called Magnitsky Act to move forward in uh, this topic. Well, as Europe plans actions for sanctions against Belarusian officials, we know now Maria Klosnikova formally facing charges. Tokes. She had been held in detention. We were expecting this to come. This now begins legal proceedings on national security grounds, yet again a sign of a very serious clampdown on this transition council, this opposition coordination group. And, of course, we'll stay across the latest in the queue. Alex, thank you for that. Well, as we heard there, protests against the disputed re-election of President Lukashenko are now in their sixth week. And neighbouring Poland is backing the opposition, offering assistance to activists forced into exile. Magdalena Czodanik has more. Jana Szostak is a Belarusian activist living in Poland. She has organized a screening protest in front of the European Commission Representation Office in Warsaw. It's to show support for the anti-government demonstrations in her home country. This whole situation is for us all, in my opinion, an excuse to create a new diaspora, to define a new Belarus. For the first time in my life, I went to Grodno to vote for her. More and more leaders of Belarusian revolution have come to Warsaw, including Svetlana Tihanovskaya and Olga Kovalkova, who is a member of the Presidium of the Coordination Council of Belarus. She was recently forced out of the country by the Lukashenko regime and came to Poland. They put me into their car and took me out of the Belarusian territory, and I called the Polish embassy and told them about the situation. It was half past two in the morning, and they had arranged for the Polish side to let me in. Foreign Affairs Vice Minister Marcin Przydać expresses his support for the people fighting for change. The Belarusian nation should have the right to fight for their, you know, for their freedom. We as Europeans, um, Polish, owe our solidarity 
uh, to those uh, people. That's why we started um, a special uh, program called uh, Solidarity with uh, Belarus. This project helps people financially and also by facilitating the arrivals of the repressed Belarusians to Poland to study or to receive treatment in hospitals. One of the beneficiaries of the program is Belarusian House in Warsaw. Alej Zaremiuk is the head of the institution who, amongst others, helps arrange arrivals. This Solidarity with Belarus program is very important. People know that when they risk their lives, they receive health care and freedom in Poland. There cannot be a lack of respect, rudeness and humiliation for the human dignity from the government towards the Belarusian nation. The government has to change.